yesterday and I said to my parents what I was doing today my mum and dad um, being from the Caribbean and Barbados to be <laughs> precise they looked at me and they was like don't go down there and cause the trouble <laughs> and I was like mum i have too old for that now I have to fight in a different way here we are again I mean you came to this country in the 60s in the Windrush generation you were fighting the same fight 20 years later in the 80s I'm fighting the same fight and then now my children and grandchildren in 2020 are doing the exact same thing. And I feel to myself, at what point do we say, do you know what, enough's enough? My name is Haroon and um, we're, we are here to support the Black Lives Matter movement. First of all, I would like to say that we are all equal and the parents of today should teach the next generation, their children, that everybody's equal no matter who, where they're from, who they are, or what colour they are. We're all equal, we, are all, we have all come here today to celebrate that all lives and black lives matter. Show solidarity to the black people who died in United States and in United Kingdom and the people who died in the COVID-19. I come from, I'm a child of the 50s, so of course a lot of it you, ex you accept. That's the way life is. But yes, of course, I mean, I have experienced racism and continue to experience it on a, on a daily basis. You know, the way you, you, you walk into a shop and someone is staring at you like you're a common thief, even at my age, um, you know, being in my 60s. Uh, it's just, just an insult. The rest of the world completely appalled and finally kind of feeling enough is enough and we know that police brutality has been going on for decades in the UK as well as the US and I'm sure in France and Germany against black people, people of colour. Conflict has been there for generations, as has racism been there for generations, you know. It was made in Britain, wasn't it? But the fact of the matter is, I think what we've seen in the last month is a much, much bigger response from the whole community. And all those things have become very important in the last few weeks. Yes, there will always be opposition, but you don't win battles unless you beat the opposition. It's as simple as that. We have to stand up to it and make clear that we do stand in solidarity with one another and we are prepared to take on these questions. Since the disowning of the Edward Colston statue in Bristol, it's wonderful to see that figures of slavers up around the country are being questioned and removed, such as Sir John Cass outside UEL and the recent confirmation of the Cecil Rhodes statue being removed in Oxford. We are taking the knee. Another statue in Bristol had been torn down that very day. I was so delighted because as a child in Liverpool, my mum had shown me a monument to the enslaved Africans. It was hidden away in a quad of offices and my mother was always angry at how this uh, monument was, was known by so few. But there's some fundamental change that needs to take place. Hundreds of years, black people have been kept out of the economic system and fed a system that works against us. That needs to change. We can't catch up if we've given a head start. There needs to be fundamental change to help us to fulfill our potential. There needs to be a change in the way we're perceived. There needs to be a counter narrative to our history. We need to tell our own history. All colonized countries have had their history written for them. We need to say how it was. And only when people understand how great those countries were, our countries were, will they realize the destruction that colonialism brings. What do you mean by justice? 
Well, just for everyone to be treated with equality in this society, everyone to be treated well, irrespective of your race or your religion or whatever. That's, that's, what, that's what we are looking for, to be treated with equality, not looking at the person's skin, the color of their skin or their race, but on the individual, what they bring to society. I'm talking as an educator and it's so wonderful to see so many young people here today. Um, what I want to talk about, I'm an English teacher and I'm also a trade unionist in the um, National Education Union and my message today is really that Black Lives Matter needs to be fought for in every school because this is where racism starts in our country, in our schools. Why am I saying this? You would be familiar with the headlines in, um, about schools the fact that um, Afro-Caribbean boys, Asian boys and boys from ethnic minority backgrounds are overrepresented in the school exclusions data. Secondly, some groups of students consistently, black students consistently underperforming in exams. The results reveal a gap in achievement for black boys, for Pakistani boys, especially if they're from working class backgrounds. We want an anti-racist curriculum. It's, uh, the curriculum is no longer good enough. It's outmoded, outdated. We want something that reflects our young children. Thank you. From the community, from the politicians, from the institutions, from the organizations. We really need to ask ourselves, how are we going to progress from this? And how are we going to stop this? of the thousands of people who have died in custody through social and economic policies throughout the world and even locally. Has that not been enough? We need to wake up and not just remember this moment of putting our fist up in the air, but we need to live it. We need to be at the forefront and make sure that actions Actions speak louder than words. Actions are implemented from the top to the bottom. Thank you, brothers and sisters. I find it really difficult to chant the words Black Lives Matter because it hurts. It causes me immense pain to stand in a sea of thousands of people and have to say those words. Why do I have to say those words? Surely it is an irrefutable truth because they are lives. I, I am mixed race. I more than most cannot hide from whiteness. My father is a white man and I love him very much. I am white just as much as I am proudly, strongly black. I don't want to hide from whiteness. I don't want to hide from myself. The beauty of black people that I have seen is that we have always embraced white people into our families, homes and hearts. There needs to be a change in thought, a deep change towards empathy and compassion. It's easy for black people, and I speak to black people right now, it's easy for us to sit and point fingers at other races to how they treat us. It's easy to get vexed and create a scene when we see injustice done to us. But as much as we point the fingers, there's two fingers looking at my community. There's two fingers pointing at us. So when I say Black Lives Matter, I'm not just talking to racist police officers. I'm not just talking to an education system. I'm talking to my young black brothers. I'm talking to my children's generation who feel it necessary to take their own life under circumstances. It's just unnecessary. 
I have been involved along with many people in this park in campaigns and protest movements in East London and up and down the country. And what has changed? In the late 70s, we had racist attacks on the streets of New York and the National Front, marching not very far from here. We had people like the British movement meeting in the Denmark Arms Pub opposite the town hall. Right. Yet, people fought back self-defense campaigns, community self-organization, and we got rid of the races from the streets of East London. In 1981, we had the uprisings in Brixton, in Liverpool, up and down the country. We had the Scorman Inquiry. In 1991, we had the McPherson Inquiry. This, again, is a watershed move, uh, uh, moment in British history. But let us not make, uh, 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 make the mistakes of the past. Let us not forget that until we keep up the pressure, right, we will get bits thrown at us. Now it's all or nothing. We cannot go back 40 years of resistance, but longer, in fact, going back to Notting Hill. So and 1,741 people have died in police custody or otherwise following contact with the police in England and Wales since 1990. Not a single police officer has been convicted in connection to these deaths. So we're going to say their names. This is the UK, yeah? Edson de Costa. Edson Costa. Sarah Reid. Sarah Reid. Rashan Charles. Charles. Mark Duggan. Mark Duggan. Roger Sylvester. Roger Sylvester. Christopher Alda. Christopher Alda. Sean Rick. Sean Rick. Cherry Gross. Cherry Gross. Shaku Bayo. Bayo. David Bennett. David Bennett. Joy Gardner. Joy Gardner. Cynthia Jarrett. Cynthia Jarrett. Jimmy Bobenga. Jimmy Bobenga. David Olawaya. David Olawaya. Mazib Mohammed. Mazib Mohammed. Leon Patterson. Leon Winston Rose. Winston Rose. Paul York. Paul York. Michael Powell. Michael Powell. Sponford Antonio Green. Sponford Antonio Green. Kwame Sasu Wiredu. Kwame Sasu Wiredu. Ricky Bishop. Ricky Bishop. Derek Bennett. Derek Bennett. Sultan Khan. Sultan Khan. Asif Dad. Asif Dad. Sarah Thomas. Sarah Thomas. Leon Marshall. Leon Marshall and many, many more. George Floyd. George Floyd. George Floyd. Breonna Taylor. Breonna Taylor. 